Welcome back to Zestology. I'm Tony Wright and this is the podcast all about energy, vitality and motivation. I did a hacks episode about a month ago uh, and really enjoyed it actually. And I had lots of nice feedback, which is, which was particularly nice. And um, it seems that far from being put off by the thought of listening to me wittering on in my spare room for half an hour, you actually quite enjoy it. So I've decided to do another one. It also gives me a chance to completely geek out on my new podcast microphone. I don't think I've set it up quite right yet, but last time I told you I'd kind of set up podcast corner in the spare room, which um, isn't the most aesthetically pleasing. I mean, you know, if you were looking to decorate a spare room in lovely shades of pastel to welcome visitors. You wouldn't go for these kind of spiky foam pads that I've put in the corner of the room. But it is great for recording podcasts. There's still work in progress. There's still work to do, and I need to kind of get more of it done. But um, I've now got my new mic as well, my new Rode microphone, which I've been looking forward to for a while. And, and thanks to Steve, who edits this podcast from Creative Radio, for suggesting it. But hopefully it sounds okay. And uh, and it gives me a chance to geek out on it a little bit and record this new hacks episode. Enough of the geeking. Let's get on with the hacks. The idea of this podcast and the idea of the one that I did last month is that I know a lot of people who are into this podcast are very into biohacking and making little tweaks and tricks and adjustments to their lifestyle to get an extra five or ten percent to kind of feel better, to optimize their health and wellness and Uh, The idea is to just talk about some of the hacks that I've been talking about, that I've been looking at, that I've been inspired by. Let's start then with the Aura Ring, which I've spoken about before on this podcast. Um, It is definitely technology to energize you and provide some interesting data uh, around your kind of sleep, your health, your heart rate, your heart rate variability. And I know more people are coming to this podcast all the time. More people are getting really interested in how they can do a deep dive into optimizing their health. And the reason I know this is because a lot of people, even friends of mine, stop me and say, I have heard you talking about the Aura Ring. What's that all about? Well, I know I've mentioned the Aura Ring before, and you obviously know that you can, a lot of people listening to this might have an Aura Ring already. It's spelled O-U-R-A if you want to get an Aura Ring. I've been using it for a couple of years. My heart rate variability overnight has gone down a little bit recently, which I'm quite annoyed by. But I think it might be an indication that my histamine levels have increased and I'm going to investigate that some more. But the reason for talking about the Aura Ring today is that um, a couple of weeks ago on my blog, I looked at research which suggested that Aura Rings can predict COVID-19 symptoms three days early. And I've actually taken part in this poll and this study. Every day you had a little link in the Aura app and you filled out if you'd had symptoms and then if you had a test for COVID-19. And over the course of three months, they've they've found that this bit of tech that I'm wearing on my thumb at the moment, and the reason I wear it on my thumb is it's the the only place where it won't fall off. Um, I know it's not the most stylish of places to put it, but it's got to be done. Um, They found out that this bit of tech that can be put on your thumb uh, can actually spot if you've got coronavirus three days early. And I mean, this is this shows how sophisticated this bit of technology is. And the reason I wanted to mention it today on this podcast is because the NBA are desperate to try and get games underway again, finish their season. They've been looking at all sorts of different plans, playing at Disney, isolating the players. And the NBA are giving the Aura Ring to the players to track COVID symptoms. They'll be measuring temperature, pulse, respiratory rate, other physiological data that could theoretically be helpful for detecting whether someone has COVID-19 even before you start to get symptoms. So it's quite exciting. Uh, not everybody is keen on this in the NBA and they've, it's optional. You know, the players don't have to do it. Some people are worried that, I mean, you know, normally when you have an Aura Ring, your data is your own and nobody else checks it. And I wonder if it, if you're in the NBA and you're wearing an Aura Ring, then somebody else is checking your data. I'm not quite sure about that. But I think this just goes to show the power of this technology and what tech can do for us. I mean, this is potentially one of the most uh, revolutionary breakthroughs in the fight against coronavirus and COVID-19. Imagine if everybody on the planet had an Aura Ring. Well, it's not going to happen for a start. They're not particularly cheap. But I think it shows the power of the Aura Ring. I'm a really big fan. I'm, I'm not on any cut. I'm not an affiliate. I'm just really keen to 
let you know about it. It's um, it's also pretty much the only tracker that you can put into airplane mode. And it is definitely one of my favorite hacks. It's one I've been using for a long time. And when you do get it, make sure you do put it into airplane mode as well, because I know a lot of people just wear it and they've got Bluetooth on all day, but you know, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, there is an element of radiation. It is very low levels, but you don't want that on your skin all day because your body, your primal meat sack does not understand these weird EMFs that are emitted from your phone and from any devices that you might be wearing as well. And that's where the aura is really nice. You know, yeah, it measures the temperature and the pulse and the respiratory rate, and it doesn't have a display, so it doesn't distract you during the day. But the fact that you can put it into airplane mode as well, I believe, because I know I've, I've met the guys who run Aura, and I interviewed more than one a couple of years ago. Um, and I know that that is something that has probably been the hardest bit to code in the hardware and the software. Um, the, the being able to put it into airplane mode, that was pretty much harder than anything else they've done. So um, if you get an Aura Ring, let me know and let me know um, what you think about the symptom spotting uh, and the nighttime stats and the activity stats and everything else. Let's move from the Aura Ring to the best bit of kitchen tech I've ever owned. It is a humble little beauty. It's not very expensive as well. It is the Instant Pot. And you don't switch off when I talk about this because this is outstanding. It is, if you, I mean, you, you probably, you've been listening to Zestology enough that you've got rid of the microwave, right? Tell me you're not using a microwave anymore. You're not cooking Franken food. You're not putting a sweet potato in to cook in the microwave for four minutes. You've probably thrown that out. But this is the closest thing to a kind of healthy, quick device that cooks food quickly to replace the microwave that I've ever had. It cooks, steams, sautés, makes yogurts and desserts and jams and so much more. And lockdown has just made me appreciate it more than ever. I've really enjoyed it. I, I love the Instant Pot. I think one of the things that is so good about it is it makes very fresh food. You can cook food from frozen. We get frozen lump of beef, whack it in there for an hour, it is cooked absolutely beautifully. It makes yogurts and it makes histamine friendly yogurts as well, or rather histamine intolerance friendly yogurts. I've been I've been blogging about this on my other site, histamineintolerance.net. Um, I've been, I mean, all you do is you heat up a bit of cream, coconut cream in the Instant Pot, and then you let it cool, and then you empty in some probiotics, some histamine-friendly probiotics. I know it sounds mad, doesn't it? And then you press yogurt mode and leave it for eight to 16 hours. And I've done this four times in the Instant Pot. One was amazing, two were quite good, this is batches of yogurt. The last batch, I, I never want to talk about it ever again. It was so hideous. They say that you know if your batch of yogurt has gone off in the cooking, and this one definitely did. Well, I don't want to talk about the mold that was there eight hours later or the next morning. But uh, yeah, we, we knew that one hadn't worked quite as well. So I need to get back in the saddle and make that again. And uh, I've spoken about making histamine intolerance friendly yogurt a few times, but that is one of the things that the Instant Pot can do. Um, we cook rice in it. Uh, you can steam veggies in it. It's just so good. The Instant Pot. And I did write a blog about my three favorite recipes in the Instant Pot. And that is on uh, TonyWrighton.com. Yeah, one of the recipes was adapted or inspired by the Bulletproof Cookbook. And it was Bulletproof Beef Shin. And I just used a bit of olive oil and turmeric and other spices. Cook it from frozen. I told you, you can cook beef shin from frozen. Put it in the pot for about an hour and 15 minutes. And then just shred it up with a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, which is definitely the secret ingredient. As I say, that comes from the Bulletproof Cookbook. I should definitely be on a commission with all this IP love, shouldn't I? But the Instant Pot is really good. And um, I think you'll like it. Okay, so we've covered the Ura Ring and the Instant Pot. Next up, I want to uh, talk a little bit more about coronavirus. Obviously, it's been on all of our minds over the last few months, and it doesn't seem to go away. And um, I've had a, I've had a, I've got a new computer. I've had the same computer for eight years, and I've now got a new computer. And my other one was just about falling apart. And in the five or six years that I've been doing this podcast, I don't think I've ever had an interview that has got lost or gone wrong or corrupted. And I've done an interview with Joe from Self Decode, which is a brilliant site. Um, 
and um, it's it's the sister site of Self Hacked, and we, we did a brilliant podcast. And or even though I said it myself, it was brilliant. And for whatever reason, the file is completely corrupted, and I can't use it. And at the time of recording, I've only just worked that out, and I'm going to have to talk to Joe and ask him if he'll do it again. I'm sure he will. It's a very nice chat. But um, this is going out uh, between now. And this going out, I will have emailed Joe so he'll know about that. And I'm very sorry to him. But listen, anyway, on this self-decode site, they've got a COVID-19 risk assessment, which is quite interesting, actually. They've taken all the known risk factors for coronavirus and they've put it into a very simple to fill out survey and questionnaire. It's quite a good idea, actually. You can find out your risk from coronavirus and get recommendations on how to decrease your risk as well. I took this test. And I was surprised by the results. I was surprised at how low my risk level was for having serious complications from COVID-19 and how high my risk level was for having to go to hospital with COVID-19. And I have to say it wasn't that high. I spoke to Joe about it afterwards. He said, well, a lot of that is because you're, you're a man and men tend to be more seriously affected by COVID-19 than women. But um, I thought it was very interesting uh, questionnaire and uh, you can go to self decode if you want to fill that out and see your own risk assessment as I say it doesn't take very long um, Joe Cohen is a very knowledgeable bloke and he's the one who set up self decode and he will be on the podcast but I'm gonna have to record it again because in the new computer setup it's all kind of got lost I blame my old eight-year-old computer but there you go nightmare though when you discover that you've spent an hour recording a podcast and it's gone wrong. It's not what you want. Okay, so we've done the Ura Ring, we've done the Instant Pot, we've done Self Decode. I want to talk about something a little bit weird now, and that is Emily's Crisps. I don't know if you're a fan of Emily's Crisps, but you know one of the things that experts go on about again and again on this podcast is not to eat too many vegetable oils. When you eat vegetable oils, it can cause inflammation, it can hasten the onset of disease, it can make you feel suboptimal. And, you know, most vegetable oils, especially when they're heated to high temperatures in crisps, are not very good for you. Um, and Emily's vegetable crisps, and specifically the sweet potato crisps, were one of the very few crisps that didn't use vegetable oils, didn't use sunflower oil or another oil. And um, I know a lot of people in the community that listen to this podcast and the biohacking community um, would like to buy Emily's crisps in the past. But they've changed their recipe. And they've now got sunflower oil in them. So nobody's buying Emily's crisps anymore. It's a great disappointment. I mean, it's, you know, it's not really a hack because I'm kind of saying in the past that was that was a good, um, a, a good uh, healthy crisp hack. And now I'm not. I'm gutted about this. And in the nicest possible way, I don't want to kind of be online trollish. And I don't want to be kind of, hey, what have you done to your crisps? You've changed the recipe. But it was one of the only crisps you could actually eat if you wanted to be healthy. So I've sent them a very polite message on an Instagram post. And I tagged my friends, uh, Tim Biohacker and a couple of others, just saying, I'm a bit gutted you've changed the recipe here. You know, I thought this was a pretty good one. Um, and they did get back and they said... Uh, well, they said it was due to overwhelming demand, but I think it might have been due to money as well. And it's probably very, very cheap to use vegetable oil. But anyway, um, you know, message Emily's crisps politely. It's like a kind of polite trolling, if you know what I mean. I mean, polite customer feedback rather than trolling is probably a better a better word. I've just realised we've got this far on the podcast and we have not given hacks ratings to any of the hacks that we've mentioned so far. So let's start with the Ura Ring. I mean, I give that a hacks rating of five out of five. I absolutely love the Ura Ring. I, I Even despite the fact it looks a bit weird wearing a ring on my thumb, I do it anyway and I've been doing it for a couple of years because it gives me so much information. It's a hacks rating of five out of five. And I'm also giving a hacks rating of five out of five to the Instant Pot, which is the best bit of kitchen tech I've ever had. And I have to say, if you've got any holidays this summer which involve camping or kind of self-catering accommodation, you only need one bit of kit with you. And that's the Instant Pot. Because you can cook, you can saute, you can, you know, you can do everything that you need to heat up food in the Instant Pot with the lid on or the lid off. So that gets a hack rating of five out of five as well. The risk assessment on selfdecode.com, I'll give that 
I'll give that a four. You know, I mean, it's, it's a, or maybe even a three and a half because their self deco does some excellent stuff. And this is kind of like an introductory level little survey you can take if you've gone to the site for the first time. Um, it's, it's really a bit of fun because it's not really going to change the way that you behave knowing whether you've done a risk assessment on selfdeco.com. But I think it is interesting that what they like to do is they like to take the science, analyze the science, and then present it in a kind of easy to understand format. So three out of five for that. And Emily's crisps, well, it's not a hack, is it? So um, we won't give that a rating. A uh, quick sip of my coffee um, before I move on to my next hack. A couple of supplements for you next. I've been trying out CBD over the past couple of months. I actually heard Joe Rogan talk on his podcast about a particular brand of CBD gummies that he likes a lot. Um, and he said he has them in the evening and it helps him with focus and relaxation. Obviously, it should be emphasized that CBD is completely legal. It's, it's the CBD with the THC, the psychoactive bit taken out. Um, and these CBD gummies that I bought were CBD MD gummies. So it's kind of basically like an opal fruit or something like that. And you, 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 they're pretty tasty, I'm going to be honest with you. And it's, it's a very mild effect, I must say. Um, the, um, it was sold to me as getting all the benefits of CBD, cannabid oil, um, with broad spectrum hemp extract. And um, I was kind of quite excited about kind of getting into the zone by having these CBD gummies. And especially since Joe Rogan was so enthusiastic about it, and I've got quite a few other friends who are really into CBD for various things, including relaxation. I thought, you know, it'd be quite a nice way to take the edge off in the evenings and help with sleep. I have to say it's very mild. It's not the best hack you'll hear on this podcast or on today's podcast. Um, it is quite mild, but then we did have a socially distanced barbecue with some friends at the weekend and we cracked up in the CBD MD gummies in the evening and we all felt very relaxed afterwards. So maybe it does work a little bit. I'm only going to give them a three out of five on the hacks ratings because I haven't had massive success with these CBD MD gummies, but you can get them in the UK. It's a, it's a US brand and they are obviously very well respected. Um, they've got zero THC so they are legal to use in the UK. On that theme I, I want to move straight on from CBD MD gummies to uh, L-theanine and specifically sun theanine and I get the doctor's best brand and obviously the uh, usual disclaimers should come in you know don't start any new diet regime or supplement without speaking to your practitioner or your doctor first. I think I've mentioned L-theanine on this podcast before, and I'm going to mention it again now because it gets much higher than a three out of five hacks rating for two reasons. Firstly, it was suggested to me to have this, to pair this with coffee. And when you pair L-theanine, which is an amino acid with coffee, it helps you to feel very relaxed, but not drowsy and alert and focused as well. And it does works really well with coffee. I've been doing this for a couple of months and it is not that I feel, I don't normally feel jittery with coffee, but some people who feel jittery with coffee will take this and they'll feel better. But it do, it is a nice sensation taking this with coffee. Um, it kind of promotes a positive mood. It makes you feel a little bit more alert. And more recently, I've been reading about the benefits of taking L-theanine at night for sleep. So I've, I've literally just started trying it. It would need more research before I kind of can conclusively say, wow, this is amazing. But I, I had it last night and honestly, I just slept. I felt like I was just cuddled in a warm blanket all night after having had the L-theanine in the evening. Normally, as I say, I do it in the morning. Um, it's an amino acid that's found in green tea. It is responsible for the re relaxation inducing effect of tea consumption. And uh, they say that L-theanine can improve sleep quality, enhance mental acuity and soothe away tension and nervousness. As I say, I've definitely noticed the mental acuity bit. I've definitely noticed the soothing away of tension and nervousness, uh, taking the edge off, as I like to put it. And now I think I might have noticed the sleep quality thing as well. Needed a little bit more attention, but I'm giving L-theanine a five out of five. And for me, that works better than CBD. I feel like I hear a lot more people talking about CBD than L-theanine, but for me, it's it's got to be L-theanine all the way. 
Right, a couple more hacks before we finish. Um, well, let's talk about a strange post that I wrote on my sister site, histamineintolerance.net. This is my passion project site. Like you might have heard me talk about it before. But I wrote a post on hoovering. I know, this is, this is this is what my life has come to. I now write blog posts on hoovers and vacuuming. But I hadn't given too much thought to dust until I invested in a lockdown purchase of a, a vacuum cleaner that actually works. I think before we had one which cost about a fiver and really, I mean, I might as well have been sucking it up with my mouth. It simply wasn't working at all. Um, but uh, the way our house which we've been living in for over a year now, looked so different after a good seeing to with the Hoover. That's the only way I can put it. It was quite shocking. The carpets look completely different. And here's the reason that I wrote this blog. And here's the reason I'm talking about Hoovers to you on a biohacking podcast. I've been sleeping way better ever since we got the lockdown purchase of the Hoover. I was getting very blocked up before. And it must have been all that dust. It turns out a lot of us have an allergic reaction of some sort to house dust. The immediate response is said to involve an immune response involving production of IgE antibodies and high levels of histamine in your body. And you don't have to be histamine intolerant to feel the benefit of this. Now, I know a lot of people are tight like me and get cheap hoovers. And we just decided to get a proper one that actually worked because... Well, there's a little bit more carpet surface area now. And uh, firstly, I mean, the, the place just does look much nicer. And secondly, I'm sleeping a lot better because of it. So it's it's really interesting. As with all these things, you never quite know if it's the Hoover or something else. But um, as well as the fact the place looks nicer, I've definitely been sleeping better as well. And the thought of all this house dust and house mites crawling all over the place. It's pretty gross. I've basically been living with that for a year. Look, I know all this housework chat is particularly exciting to you, but it might be worth giving your house an extra clean, an extra hoover or vacuum tonight and seeing how you breathe, how your breathing is, how your sleep is. And we even bought a hoover that can do upholstery too. So yes, I've been vacuuming the bed and the pillows. It's quite satisfying. Do you know what? I'm going to give that a hack rating of four out of five. And I hope that helps you. Just one more thing I wanted to talk about before I finish this podcast and I finish rambling away. And that is, it's not really a hack as such, but I have briefly touched on the podcast about our experience here with coronavirus. I feel extremely fortunate and grateful that we've kind of been okay and so of the members of our family so far, and obviously like just kind of touching everything that that continues to be the case. I've also got, you know, so much empathy with those who haven't been okay. Um, we did get ill at the end of February and March, and we all had the same symptoms at around the same time. And weirdly, it came a couple of weeks after I presented a big sports tournament in London where about 20 competitors, and I think at least as many as that number again of support staff had flown in from China. Now, who knows whether that was where we got coronavirus or not, but um, we've been not sure, but we thought, well, we probably did have it because we all, we had, you know, telltale symptoms. I had to shield off work for a couple of weeks and was pretty much stuck in this room. I'm recording this podcast now. And we did some antibody tests. And I have briefly mentioned this on another podcast, but um, what was interesting is that my other half, Faith, came up positive for the coronavirus antibodies and I came up negative and we haven't tested our son. But I mean, it's just so weird, isn't it? You know, firstly, I was like, well, that's great. How can that possibly happen? How can I live in the same household as her and not have contracted COVID? And then it turns out, I've got another family member who had exactly the same thing. She tested negative and her husband tested positive. So you kind of think what's going on there. And I've kind of delved into it a little bit more. And it seems like these antibody tests are not 100% reliable. You are very unlikely to get a false positive, but you're much more likely to get a false negative for lots of reasons. Firstly, they're not that sensitive. So you might have a small level of antibodies and it won't show up. 
And secondly, and, and really interestingly, a lot of people just don't create the antibodies, but fight it off with T cells instead. I've been following a doctor on Twitter called Dr. Carol Sikora, who reckons up to 90% of people who have coronavirus might not show up as positive on the antibody test because they fight it off with T cells and they'll never need to make the antibodies in the first place. So it's a bit of a mess. I mean, you know, in, in terms of a hacks rating, I'll probably give it three out of five. It's, you know, it is nice to know that when we thought we were going mad in February and March and didn't feel very well, we weren't imagining it and Faith had it. And I mean, let's be honest, I had it as well. I had the same symptoms at the same time as her. Um, and we can't be sure because the antibody test doesn't confirm that. More sensitive antibody tests may happen in the future. Um, but uh, but I would say that if you take the test and it comes up negative, it doesn't necessarily mean you haven't had it. And of course, if it comes up positive, it doesn't necessarily mean you won't get it again. Uh, these are such strange times that we live in that, you know, it's, it's definitely worth considering all these things. And um, we haven't learned a massive amount from our antibody tests. Bearing in mind, we live in the same house. We share the same bed. One of us is negative and one of us is positive, And we all got ill at the same time. I mean, I've had it. I'm pretty sure of that, but um, I don't have the piece of paper to prove it. So I just thought I'd kind of quickly, uh, quickly touch on that because I, I do think it's interesting and I know a lot of people are considering this and as they get more accurate, um, it might be worth looking into them again. But uh, at the moment, um, you can certainly take the test I talked about where you can um, uh, see your prevalence of risk for COVID-19 and the antibody tests um well they say they're reliable but yeah we don't, we're not sure um and if i've got if there's two couples in my family where one tested positive and one tested negative then you know, it's pretty weird isn't it as i say all of that is kind of couched in the fact that i feel extremely grateful that we didn't get badly ill and nor of other family members and a huge amount of sympathy and empathy for people who have been badly affected by it it's um it's a, it's a situation which is not going away, is it? And um, it does seem like the best way that we can look after ourselves is firstly follow the guidelines and then also look after our immunity. Thank you, as always, for listening to this podcast and this Hacks episode. And I hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. I do have more of a list of stuff that I want to talk about. So I might do another Hacks soon. I've been trying out the new Sensate Pebble, which is lovely, I have to say. And um, a lot of the oral biohacking stuff, the Dr. Hisham stuff is really good as well. I've been using that quite a bit. And also a, a massager, which I wanted to talk about, but I think we'll save that for another time. 